so the uh, I think we've all had this experience of being in a situation where you know you're you're on your way to a destination and a spot appears and you ask yourself, okay, do I just pull in and take it and end up perhaps walking by umpteen even better spots and feeling like a fool, or do I keep holding out for a better spot and maybe there is no better spot and I end up circling all the way back around and of course someone has now taken that as well and I'm totally out of luck. Um, well, fortunately, we've got some, uh, some optimal strategies for you here as well. So it turns out that the optimal stopping point depends entirely on what's called the occupancy rate or what percentage of the spots in that area are filled. And we provide a handy table. You can cut it out and paste it on your steering wheel, your dashboard. <laughs> Um, so, for example, if, uh, if the spaces in this neighborhood are 90% full, then you should not take a parking space until you are just seven spots away from your destination. Um, <laughs> if it is 99% occupied, which is maybe a little bit closer to accurate, uh, then you should be willing to park starting 69 spaces away from your destination, which is like something like a quarter of a mile. Um, beyond that, as you can see, it, it spirals out of control rapidly, and we actually recommend that you just don't bring your car at all. Um, and this is a case where I think the looking at the optimal strategies not only gives us some advice about what to do behind the wheel, but also lets us think about parking as a design problem. And so one of the things that, that really comes to light when you look at this is that going from, let's say, 90% occupancy to 99% occupancy um, only accommodates 9% more cars, and yet it results in everyone's search for a parking space and ultimate walking distance uh, to, to increase by tenfold. Um, and so this has, this has led to a little bit of a quiet revolution in the way that urban planners think about the allocation of uh, free street-side parking. So traditionally, this has just been viewed as, we have all these spaces, let's just ma maximize the utilization of this resource. Um, but in fact, when you start to appreciate the computational dimension of the problem, uh, it becomes clear that pushing you know, to uh, nearly 100% occupancy is actually bad for everyone involved. And it, it results in um, you know, many fold more circling the block and people holding up traffic because they're looking for a space and so forth. And in fact, San Francisco is the first city to pilot a program of dynamically adjusting parking meter prices uh, that stabilize the occupancy rate at 85%. Um, and the downside is that, of course, they are, tend to be much more expensive than they are in other cities. Uh, the upside is that you do not have this endless loop where you're searching for parking. Um, now, this, this sequential structure where at each point in time you're forced to make this kind of binding once and for all commitment, um, even though it arguably describes some of the scenarios that we've been talking about, you know, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this is a little bit far-fetched for most sort of human decisions. Um, but in fact, optimal stopping describes uh, any class of problems where you pay some cost for continuing to gather information or continuing to look and continuing to explore more options. And given that we are all, of course, human and constrained by time, um, I think it's fair to say that, in effect, every decision that we make ends up in part being a decision about when to stop. <laughs> 